What's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another episode of The Dossier, the Marvel Crisis Protocol show where we share our hot potato takes on characters, their designs, their character cards, and just generally where we think they kind of feel in the game. Uh, as usual, these are simply our opinions and our takes on this one. There are lots of conversations going around. I definitely encourage you to get out there and uh, get involved in some of those conversations because there are some great people with some great minds uh, that are discussing these ones. So this is just kind of like a, a framework to, to see to get a quick snapshot of the character and uh, what you might think about it. Uh, in this week's episode, I am joined by Troop, uh, and we are going to be giving some uh, some opinions on the very once maligned Electra yep. and uh, just what uh, what mini extravaganza brought for her and what she kind of brings to the table with her uh, with her character now. So. As usual, we're going to take a quick look at the model itself and just kind of share our thoughts on uh, on what we overall think she is. I'm going to see if I can get this to focus. This one's tricky to focus here. The, the light's actually causing some problems. Um, but uh, yeah, so we have we have Electra here, uh, uh, a nice premier ninja going on here. Uh, I'm going to start off with this friggin' contact point. Huh. Like that, that wrist. I know so many people who have broken Electra at, at the wrist. It's a great pose. It is. Right? It is. But it's it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you, you, you look at it the wrong way and it's going to snap. Yeah. Um, but I absolutely love the fact that she's vaulting over it. She's got the sigh raised in the back. She's got that kick going out there. The nice dynamic motion with the hair and the bandana and everything like that. I really do like this model. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a great model. I, I kind of wish this is sort of like the range of motion we got with Black Cat with, yeah. with that model. Yeah. <laughs> that one just kind of turned out looking a little goofy. Uh, whereas this one, uh, I feel like we kind of got a really dynamic, uh, aggressive looking model. Uh, I also like the little ninja stars trapped yes. in the, the thing. Although, I mean, this, that looks like concrete and that's ninja stars caught in concrete. So like, what's, what sort of steroids are these ninjas throwing? She does have, she does have uh, a bunch of crazy ninja trainings. So. <laughs> that is, but I don't think those are her ninja stars. <laughs> and those, like those stars look like they were thrown by the Hulk. Um, but yeah, so generally speaking, I love them all. I think it's, I think it's really cool. Um, I mean, any, any personal takes yourself? I, I do love it. I definitely think of like, you know, uh, she is supposed to embody the, the female femme fatale ninja warrior. And I, I think they do a really good job with it. I think that she, um, is, she looks like a badass. That's, oh yeah. That's where I'm going with it. Yeah. No, I, I think, and I think her new card kind of reflects that, that's which fair. is really kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about her new card. So before we talk about her card itself, it should be noted that she comes with some, uh, hand ninjas, some, yeah. some goons. Yeah. Um, she is one of, I think, uh, five characters that have grunts at this point. Yes. Uh, so her hand ninjas, it's a very, it's a very simple stat line. I mean, two health, medium move, uh, size two, one, one, two defensive lines. Got a very basic four dice attack with a double wild bleed. Um, they got a ninja vanish that they can, Spend zero power, vanish, and move a uh, uh, an objective over to an allied character. It's gonna be very sneaky. Very sneaky. Uh, there's ninja ambush. Basically, when they're brought onto the table, they get to immediately make a ninja weapons attack. Uh, and then they got the hand, which basically means they uh, they can interact with uh, or they can't contest secure objectives, but they don't have to pay power when interacting with civilian or asset tokens. Um, so I mean, it's cool. My personal opinion, I don't like grunts in the game, but they are they are here, and I think the hand ninjas bring some interesting tech to it, and I think you can really play around with it and, and do some cool stuff. I like them as gophers. They do a good job at, at a variety of things, and they have some <laughs> sneaky stuff in the background. Yes. Yeah, very true. Very true. Uh, so for as far as Electra's stat line herself, she's 433, so she did get an upgrade in her physical defense. Which was big. Makes them it makes a lot of sense for a ninja to have that extra physical defense. Yep. And for a four threat character. Yeah. Right. Uh, she's got six stamina on a healthy, five on her injured, uh, four threat as we discussed, size two, medium movement. I mean, it's a good it's a good solid yep. stat line at this point. Like yep. that one stat of physical defense uh, just kind of gives her some new life. Yes, I, I think as a, a six health three three three, she was not good enough. Uh, as at least for defensive stats wise. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, why don't you take us through Ancient Throwing Blades? Yeah, it's uh, it's range three, strength five. Uh, it's a gainer. Uh, <laughs> it has a wild pierce, and uh, after the attack is resolved, if there's no hand ninjas in play, you can place them within one of this character with an activated token as part of your spell. Yeah. So a big change on this one is that it became a gainer. Uh, yes. It used to not gain any power. She was incredibly power starved yes. uh, before. She only had one way of gaining power, or two ways basically: yes. taking a punch to the face, or whenever she would deal damage, she would gain one power. 
and it it slowed her kit down immensely not having a proper gainer or builder on there yes so this first off being a mystic attack uh and with a pierce yes it it just means you're you're and it's just an auto gainer and it's range three like it is yeah it, it became is. such a good uh, good utility attack right it is yeah uh so now we have the the big uh, the big hot tamale here we got impale which is a range one attack, which I mean pairs very nicely with the placement from the uh, from, uh, from another ability she has. It is eight dice uh, for five power. It used to be six, yeah. Um, so very expensive. And if the hand ninjas happen to be within two of her, she gets to add two attack uh, two dice to the attack roll. So it's great to do like an ancient throwing blades into an impale. Uh, if uh, the defending character doesn't get to add crit results to the defense roll and cannot add additional dice. Uh, to uh, as a result of crit rolls. Yep. So I mean that turns off a lot of, of dice explosion there. Yeah. And then she gets a medium advance on top of it all, like a, a cheeky little way of just getting out of dodge or getting further into the scrum. Yeah, it's it's always good to be able to say, I yeah, I have a ten dice attack over here, and uh, it's it's going to make sure it hits you because your your crits are all messed up. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, no this this attack it's it was always a good attack to get off, but at six power range one, and with her being very stark for power, it was very difficult to get it, off. It always felt like you had to have someone step up to range one with you absolutely dumpster you and then you wake up and just throw yeah. this into them meanwhile in the couple games i've played with her since i think i've gotten it off like two or three times a game yeah. at this point which is yeah. crazy uh so we got assassin step this is a uh, an active ability um it is or no sorry it's a reactive ability it's uh two power when this character deals damage to an enemy character with an attack after it's resolved you can place within range one of the enemy character you pair this with the ancient throwing blades to get within range of an impale oh yeah She's fast. She, she she gets into places and then after that impale and runs off, like we had a game where she went from one far point to the other far point and I was like, that's that's excellent. Yeah. Good work. Yeah, if she has the power for assassin step, she she gets around. Yeah, um, yeah it is it is really fast because I mean the range three, that's six inches plus the size of the base, plus like the size of the enemy blaze, plus an extra range one. Yeah. Right? Like it's it, it, it's so much and and the other thing is the the main thing that gives you is you have so many options afterwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, her next one's another reactive power, cost two, martial prowess. When this character is targeted by an attack within two, it may use the superpower. Instead of rolling dice equal to its defense, it rolls five defense dice. Then if this character suffers no damage from the attack, the attacker, uh, after the attack is resolved, the attacker suffers two damage. I mean, it, it's cool. If you take no damage, you, you just punch it back a little bit. It's nice, and she has the power to do it. Well, and, and it, it can bump up her uh, attacks, especially if she gets attacked with a mystic or energy attack within range, uh, yep. short range. She can throw it back in their face, essentially. That's pretty good. And it feels like Martial Prowess was the reason why she used to have a three physical defense. Yeah. Because uh, like I guess the idea was like she would want to use this a whole lot. The problem is, is that with her power generation, she never had the power to do a whole bunch of things, and it was very limiting. Yeah. Which yeah. was unfortunate. I never felt like she she had the ability to do that, or if she did that, that's the only thing she did the entire game. <laughs> yeah. Um, now she also has Out for Blood, and when this attack, uh, when this character deals damage to an enemy character with an attack or superpower, so martial prowess oh, kicks in for that one. Nice. Uh, after the attack, uh, after the attack or superpower is resolved, this character gains one. This used to be her bread and butter of how she gained power. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, it was just way too slow. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it kind of felt like she would never get to where she needed to to uh to do any anything anything yeah. it was yeah. frustrating no exactly uh and then she has stealth which i mean any good ninja aside from daredevil has so because for whatever reason daredevil doesn't deserve stealth uh so yeah that that is her card and that's that's electra and honestly since her since she got changed up she has just felt so good to put on the table yeah uh she gets in there she is great at stabbing a whole bunch of mooks Yes. And she's very good at getting uh, getting out of dodge afterwards. Yep. Uh, I'm very impressed with her. I think she has a perfect home in either, well, in either of Daredevil's leaderships. Yes. Either Shadowland Daredevil, where she's re-rolling dice when attacking somebody uh, holding an objective, or in Marvel Knights, where if she's surrounded by a whole bunch of mooks and she can she can re-roll dice equal to enemy characters within range too. It's just beautiful. I really like her in Marvel Knights. I really felt like. She was because she can put herself wherever she wants. She's suddenly getting all these extra rerolls, which just makes her dice more consistent. Which means she's getting yeah, just like a lot more things into her opponents. I I was really impressed when I got uh, had to play into her on that one. So yeah, no that that was that was kind of a wild game, and she was getting a lot of work done because I think that was the Asgard. 
yeah. at that point. So yeah. she was punching a lot of high defense characters and getting through. Like, yeah. At, at one point, she was like just poking uh, Beta Ray in the face a whole bunch of times. With I, I think she did like uh, move up, impale, and then run back to a point. So she was scoring points every turn and also just inflicting piles of damage. Yeah, yeah. Because she ancient throwing blade. She had the power to throwing uh, to do throwing blade into an assassin step yeah. uh, into an impale. Yeah. And then she ran away after all that as well. Uh, and just, oh, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. It, it felt, um, <laughs> it kind of felt a little unfair, but it felt very like a ninja should. Yeah. In a situation like that. Yeah. So. And she went, been, she went from being what kind of felt like a dead four threat to a very effective four threat character. And, um, and it's not like she's operating in a space where she's just better than the rest of the people who could, uh, the, the four power brawlers. I think she has a place in a, a lot of lists because she is not like everybody else. She has weird movement shenanigans with a mystic builder or a, a, yeah, mystic, yeah, the, the mystic uh, gainer, gainer yep. and into a, a big physical attack. I think she kind of has like a, a, a really good niche now. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this gave her uh, a new lease on life. And it's really interesting when you pair her with a bunch of other people who like really get in the face, like the daredevil Wolverine or stuff like that it creates a lot of really tough decisions uh, for the other player to make. And it's really hard to decide, okay, like, do you want to, do you want to risk getting the impaled? Do you want to go deal with the other things? And she becomes a very dangerous target to ignore yeah. where in the past you can easily ignore her Cause it's like, well, she's not going to get the power. So who cares? You can either ignore her or just punch her and then punch her again. And she's out. Like it was, it was not hard to, to make sure that she uh, didn't just get dropped relatively quickly or yeah. Yeah, or ignore her. Yeah, no. So she she got a nice glow up. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of of Electra at this point. Me too. Uh, I think she I think she's a lot of fun. So definitely get involved in the conversation below. What did you like about the Electra change? What what would you have changed if anything else? And of course, if you want to support the channel, Patreon.com/slash Studios. We'll see you next time. Happy wargaming.